Lie me, Drew. What the Bro, fuck? Why are we hell? fucking throwing goddamn oops? I didn't even get a fucking oop Please. meter. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Stop throwing fucking oops. Jesus Christ. It's a fucking habit, I never, bro. I swear to God. I swear to God, it's a fucking, fucking habit. It's a fucking I'll habit. Fucking play again. I don't care. I'll never play again if we're throwing fucking oops in the park. Because I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, I'm going to do shit my way. So you can go kick rocks. I'm going to stack bricks up, build what I want to make. Yo, I got a lot of shit to say, so I'm going to do this every day. I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave. Six feet deep, wonder, but my body won't decay. Because my messages are timeless, so they'll put them on display. Oh, yeah, I rap with a certainty. I have a sense of urgency. A message for eternity for everyone internally. I had some people burning me, but now they fucking learn to see. I ain't the one to fuck with. Now they looking nervously, and I don't really care what you think of me respectfully. You can kick rocks if you think you're fucking better. See, I will outwork you, turn you to an enemy. Hurt you so bad that you're gonna need some therapy. I got the motherfucking recipe. Yo, what is up, YouTube man? Today we are talking about contact lobs in NBA 2K23. First things first. If you guys want to drop a like and subscribe, I do appreciate it a ton. The second thing, second, to get contact lobs, you do have to have the animations on your player. Now, there's pro, elite, small, and big contact dunks. I'm on my 7'2 slasher right now, so I get the pro and the bigs. If you make the meta 6'9 with the 93 driving dunk, you'll probably be able to get the pro and the elite, and you may not even have these dunk animations equipped. This may be the last thing you're thinking about putting on your player, but I'm telling you guys, Contact lobs are useful in NBA 2K23. If you guys remember in NBA 2K21 next gen, contact lobs were crazy. If you were driving to the hoop and somebody tried to get in your way, you would just get in a contact animation every single time. In NBA 2K22 next gen, they made him pretty much useless. If anybody bumped you in the slightest, you would miss it every single time. I don't even think I saw 20 total contact lobs in NBA 2K22 next gen. But in NBA 2K23, they've kind of balanced it out. When it comes to the badges too, Aerial Wizard's going to help you out. Posterizer, those are the only two badges you really need to worry about. And if you do get Slashing Takeover, if you notice in Finishing Moves, it even says it helps you get more alley-oop finishes when there's contact so you definitely want to throw that on if you're trying to maximize your ability to get contact love i got some gameplay for you guys of us playing the mobile event if you guys don't know the best way to win mobile is to throw lobs it's a my points event it's not so much about winning every single game which is crazy there needs to be more events where winning is the main focus where everybody on the team gets rewarded but with this it's more about being fast at finishing the game while also maximizing the my points so you're gonna see in this first gameplay we throw a lot of lobs you know i take a couple fast break shots we take a couple three pointers when it makes sense but if we're running pick and roll my first priority is to get a lob to laker Funny enough, we've actually played this event like two, three times, and every single time, the only reason we didn't get the top three awards is because there are boosters playing this. I'm letting you guys know now, do not waste your time trying to win events. The boosters will always come out on top, and if people say, oh, I win without boosting, you got to think to yourself logically, if there are people boosting the event, because we know there's at least a few people doing that, how in the world are you playing legitimately and keeping up with people that are pretty much cheating to win, you know? So you can see we're up 6-0, but like I was talking about with this event, it doesn't matter that we're up 6-0. It doesn't matter that they're not scoring. We cannot let them have 24 seconds just to miss a shot. We got to speed them up. Whether they miss the shot or make the shot, it does not matter. We got to get possession as quickly as we can. We get a nice lob right there. Now that is a lob with contact. That's not necessarily the contact lob animation. And you're going to see in this first gameplay, this is one of the extreme examples because we are forcing contact lobs and it works out for us. I never recommend to do this though. I would say like right here, man. You know, he's on Lakers hip. I could have shot the shot. There was a lot of options we had, but we took the contact lob. And it is a competitive strategy this year. You know, maybe it was NBA 2K21, NBA 2K20, where when people were trying to grind to be the top rep, they had to throw lob every single game. Now that the rep system is not like that, maybe people are just tired of throwing lobs in general. But if your build has the high driving dunk, make sure to throw them on and try them out every once in a while. You know, maybe you're on the fast break. You guys are up 10 to 2. It looks like a good opportunity to throw a lob, get a contact dunk animation. 
it gets very tiresome just seeing people do quick drops every single game. This is a nice way to spice things up, get an exciting play for you. And like I said, if you're playing a really good defensive team, they're locking everything up. You run a pick and roll. He plays the pick and roll right, but he's a little bit behind your big. You know, you might be able to get the contact lob off in those situations. It's kind of tough to completely rely on that though, because like with a dunk meter, if you're going up with a contested dunk, you still have a chance to green the dunk, get the contact dunk animation to pop off, even if it's a bad take. But with a contact lob, you don't always have the meter. If they bump you a certain way, you're not gonna get the meter like right here. That looks like a beautiful opportunity. Unfortunately, just doesn't end up working out for us. And you know, that kind of hurts because we need every single lob we can get especially playing an event like this laker is on top of the inbound though we're gonna try it again we do not get discouraged we get the lob right here let me know what you guys think in the comments about lobs about contact lobs if it works out for you if you guys have any theories about things like maybe you need all your adrenaline to get contact lob animations in a more smooth fashion maybe you think aerial wizard is more important than I think it is. I think having aerial wizard is cool. I think it definitely makes your guy get some more athletic jumps. And I think it could even increase the frequency of the contact lob animation. But I don't think it's to the degree that finishing move slashing takeover is. I feel like if you got that slashing takeover activated, you can almost rely on getting a contact lob animation every single time. It's just like when you're going for a contact dunk with the finishing move slashing takeover. The green mirror you get is huge. These guys right here, they were catching on that we were throwing lobs. We're trying to play some lazy defense as we would call it right now so we can just get the ball back very fast. You see the give and go action right here. We try to get a dunk over both of them. That Apollo in the corner right here. Unfortunately, you guys remember, they used to kind of have this system in place where whenever your guy would catch the ball near the three-point line, he would step back. That doesn't seem to be as strong this year. I've seen a lot of people shoot shots with their feet on the line, the long two-pointers, and that is kind of tough because a lot of people do neglect their mid-range rating because they're trying to put it on everything else. That might cause them to even panic whenever they see they're gonna take a two instead of taking a three, and the layup right here we miss is absolutely nuts. Laker dots me though. To the three point line, six foot nine, set shot 25 on this build, 25 to three. And I will let you guys see the scoreboard at the end of this game. Like I said, we were trying to win it. Unfortunately, though, we were trying to do it legit. And there's just no way you can keep up with people that are boosting, that know the best way to do it. You see right here, I'm in 23rd. We get a lot of laps for that game. If anything, even though we don't get the top three, the best rewards, the participation rewards they give out are pretty decent. For this gameplay right here, another one, we're actually playing some more competitive players. And when you run into competitive players, they know that you're going to go for the lobs. They're not going to allow it to happen, especially when we start out a game with a lob like that. They're going to start packing the paint. So you got to play more regularly. In these situations, it's better to just get these guys off the court. You don't want to play around too much. It can end up being a very long game, especially when somebody is isoing. These guys don't care about winning the event. They're just out here trying to have some fun, trying to do what they do. But that is bad for us because we do not have the time to wait. We need the ball as quickly as possible right here. Contact lop again doesn't end up working out for us. But man, it would have been pretty if it did. Shout out to the mobile matchmaking setup they have too. Whenever it works perfectly, it is a nice event. But there is the problem of some people can't even get the event to work. I know a lot of you guys have had that problem. I wait for Laker right here to come down on the lob. We got the lead. It doesn't matter how many turnovers I get. We're trying to get the my points. But like I was saying, there are a lot of problems where people get kicked from the event, where people can't join their friends. Sometimes if you lose a game, it separates your squad into a different arena. Then you guys have to invite each other back. For people that are trying to win or trying to get it over with as quickly as possible, it can be a bit of a hassle. We get the nice fast break point right there. We are playing the lanes. Dot and Apollo again at the mid range. The pass just does not send him all the way to the three point line. But two points is two points. You see, the point guard is cold at this point. Apollo is on a 99 steel lock build, and he actually does a pretty nice move right here. A little hop step, step back, hop jumper kind of move right there to get a two off against a pure lark. Shout out to him. Laker with the slashing takeover. Now he's trying to get some my points. He's going for contact dunks. The center, though, I mean, that's a big man in the paint right there. He gets a nice block. Check this out. I end up getting in the paint. I try to go up with a weak layup. He blocks us again, letting us know it's not going to be sweet. He even closes out nice to the corner. I got to hit him with that KD fade, though. Make the space very hard to contest right there. 
Overall, my opinion on contact lobs, I think they are a viable thing in the game. It's definitely more of a flashy play you're going to make rather than a competitive play. But, you know, like I said, the situations where there's not much there, you might as well try the contact lob or you're not going to be able to get anything that possession. They can definitely bail you out. We get a nice shot right here. This man, again, still cold. This guy goes for the back door. Laker jumps. Patient guy in the paint. I swear, man, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like people, 2K players over the years have just became so patient. I feel like everybody does that. You see a nice little pass right here. Unfortunately, Apollo misses. But I feel like everybody runs in, stops, waits for you to jump, and then just goes up. Nobody is just going up, taking full-fledged crazy dunks anymore. If they do take a dunk, it's going to be a smart, quick drop dunk. 2K players are just more safe. And that can be a tad bit frustrating because that is not me. I am not taking the safe dunk. I'm not going to wait for somebody to jump. If somebody is on my back, pause. I'm still going to go up with a crazy wild dunk. And if they block me, they block me. But if they don't block me, I'm getting a nice animation to pop off. You see, we get a shot right there, 7 to 17. These guys were pretty decent as well, too. The point guard going cold definitely hurt them quite a bit. We're kind of just trying to make them make a bad pass. And it ends up working out right there. Trying to get one more contact lob. It fails right here. I threw this gameplay in at the end for a reason. The first gameplay, you guys saw the contact lobs were working perfectly for the most part. But I didn't want to lie to you guys, mislead you. There are games where they just don't end up working. This big man too appears to have a very nice block rating interior defense. He's probably got anchor. Contact lobs are going to work on players that have lower interior defense and block and hopefully no anchor. So if you can get a contact lob on a small guard, that is the best opportunities to go for him. A kid man. Kind of selling at this point. It has been proven that the contact lobs are not going to work against these guys. Whether they just got luck on their side. Whether we got bad luck on our side. Whether that center is really just him in the paint. Stopping all contact animations from popping off. 19 to 10 now. We are pretty much just saying let him, you know, just do whatever. I'm up here. I'm trying to play a little bit back. I want him to just take the shot. He does perfectly. He greens it on cold. I think he's hit a couple of shots while cold. So... His attributes being lower does not affect him. I do a nice behind the back right here. Go to the side. Go into the paint. I'm telling Laker, let's find it. I am finishing off of the lob, maybe. I'm kind of feeling it. It ends up working, thankfully, for me. Or else I might have get yelled at by the team. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the video, man. This is Tonic. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.